looked over at the island, and all I saw was our planes dropping bombs on it. I saw the Navy bombarding the island with shells. I could see no trees standing on the island as far as where we were going to land. Everything was just shattered. And we knew that we had to take the islands. We had to, we had to island hop up to, up to Japan in order to get to, to beat the empire. I, I looked at my buddy beside me and I says, "This we'll be out of here in two days." And he says, "You really think so?" I said, oh, "Look at the island." I said, "Nobody survived it. They can't survive that." Well, we did not know about the mountains at that time. So it was very hard to believe that the Japanese were dug in the way they were in that mountain. And they had, they had evidently prepared themselves well because we had a hard time, very, very hard time digging them out. We lost so many men. The Japanese had done us bad. They, whenever they bombed Pearl Harbor without warning, they had they had really set us precedents. And the things that they had done to some of our our military that they had captured, you know, the way they had killed them, the way they had treated them, we had very little respect for Japanese. Very very little. In fact, as far as I was concerned, the only like they used to say about an Indian, the only good Indian was a dead Indian. I felt that way about the Japanese, and it took me a long long time before I could get over that feeling. I don't feel quite that badly today, but I have an aversion to buying Japanese products, which I can't even help. I have to buy them now because that's all that's on the market. <laughs> well, we started for the shore in the Higgins boats, and we got in about a half a mile offshore. There's a big, long reef at Pelotu. It extends out almost a city block, if not more, from the island. And it's shallow. It's treacherous. You can't all soft coral or not soft coral, but hard coral, and the boats can't get into the beach, so they had to transfer us to amphibian tractors. We always went in behind the 5th Regiment. So our, our beach was Orange 2, which was just off of the end of the runway for the airfield. And we started to move off of the beach, and we had so much fire coming in to us that we took our time, and it really took us almost three hours to get off the beach. Okay, now, uh, can you tell me about the most uh, memorable events that occurred on Pelotu? For the most part, throughout the about two For months. For my part, second morning after the, after the after we had had the trains come across at us, it was daylight. Just that daylight, we were sitting in the in our little hole there, the shell hole. And the gentleman, the marine who was had been sitting on a generator, cranking the generator to get the power for the transmitter and the receiver. He talked to me, he says, hey, Sarge, he says, I'm getting kind of stiff. He said, do you mind if you and I trade places? He said, I'll copy code for a while. I said, sure, that's fine. I said, but before you do that, I said, let me send you, let me send out this one call to the network to see how things are going every place else. So he did. And so I said, crank up the generator and I'll, and I'll get back. Well, he started to crank up the generator just as he started to turn the generator. A mortar exploded right outside the show. All at once, the generator stopped turning, and I looked up, and he fell over. And a six-inch piece of shrapnel had hit him here, went right across the middle of his head, cracked his skull open like it was a coconut. 
So I jumped up to give him medical attention, and whenever I looked at him, yelling for a corpsman, I could see his gray matter. I could see the ridges and the valleys of the brain. I grabbed my sulfur drugs, and I got some from another kid, and we, we, we sprinkled it in there. He didn't bleed a heck of a lot, which surprised me, because the skull or head wound usually bleeds a lot, but his, since it cracked his skull open, he didn't get much bleeding. And, uh, but he was evacuated. But what what's, reminds me so much of it? To this day, I can't remember that man's name. That's why I, I'll never forget it. And that afternoon, the Japanese tried to come across the airfield at us. They had 13 tanks. And they were trying to chase us back into the ocean. Uh, they called, called for naval fire and called for aircraft support for the carriers. And as a result, those planes came in so low overhead that I'm swearing that I could almost touch as high as the ceiling. That's how low they were flying as they came in to strafe the t enemy and to, to knock out those tanks. But they did. They stopped every one of the tanks. And there was a single, none of them could move. They were all out there. And here again, I blame General General Rupertus. He was he was our commanding general at that time, and he knew that we had having trouble up there on that mountain. And he kept sending the Marines back up there, back up there, and back up there. Chesty Puller, who was in charge of that regiment, tried to talk him out of it. Tried to get him to call the Marines, call the Army in to help us out. General Reporter said, no, this is a Marine operation. We're going to keep it a Marine operation. And I think that was a mistake. We lost, probably lost more Marines than we, than we should have. And you take a division, full division, wherever it goes in. Got about 20,000 people in it in World War II. We had 6,000 killed or wounded and evacuated out of 20,000. And that's just it's awful high. purpose that island ever served was the battle or the uh, cruiser heavy cruiser Indianapolis whenever it was carrying the atomic bomb to be dropped on Iwo Jima and as it after it had unloaded its bomb it started to go back to the states it got careless and it got sunk by a torpedo for a submarine and there were all the sailors in the water for several hours some days and those that were survived, those that were picked up, were taken to the island of Peleliu, and planes came in and picked them up and flew them back to, to the hospital area. That's the main thing it ever did. And today, if you look back on it, it was a waste of life.